If you've been watching some of our videos before, you will know that we are massive advocates of running your easy runs really, really easy. And we've been getting a lot of questions around this in the Coach Perry forum. But, but, well, does that mean I should be doing all of my runs easy? Does it mean I should be doing everything easy? And that is not what we're saying. Just want to reiterate that louder for those at the back, that does not mean that all of your training runs are done easy. We do a certain proportion of those uh, easy and long runs really, really easy, and then some higher intensity work. But the key to that is that both of those runs are done at the exact intensity that is specific to you. So easy for me and easy for you is two very different things. So we really just want those easy runs to feel really, really easy. And then when it's time to do your higher intensity runs, you've got the potential and the capacity to do those at the exact uh, intensity that you're meant to do them at. So before we get into the nitty gritties of how much you should be running easy and hard, let's just give you a little bit more background as to why we drive this point of running those easy runs easy enough. Physiologically, what we're looking to gain from those easy runs is to really build a good aerobic base. Now you may have heard about base training, you may have heard about aerobic training zones, but why is that important? The better aerobic base or aerobic capacity you have, the better your body is able to do its daily functions, providing energy for various tasks at hand, whether it's in your training or just in daily living and daily activity is absolutely key. The next would also then be how efficiently do you recover between training sessions? So the better your aerobic capacity is, the better your ability to recover from workload you may have done yesterday, whether it's a high intensity session, a long run, whatever it may be, you can recover quicker, you recover better, so your next training session becomes that much better and easier to do. Recovery is key and that's where that aerobic base is absolutely vital here. Another aspect to the easy runs and why it is important is it also does take away a little bit of the eccentric loading on the muscles. The eccentric loading, if you imagine sort of the, the muscle fibers, so my fingers being muscle fibers, an eccentric load is less muscle fibers in contact with each other. You are at a higher risk of injury in that sort of a muscle contraction. Lowering that eccentric training load just means, again, it's less risk of injury, less risk of an overuse type of injury, and again comes back to the recovery point of view. You're not doing as much damage to the body, as much damage to the legs, and that way you recover quicker so that you can put the next training session in properly without carrying that fatigue or that bit of stiffness or soreness from a previous training session. So Shona's already mentioned, we're not saying do all of your training runs easy. Please don't, don't misunderstand that. What we are saying, however, is that there needs to be a certain amount easy with a little bit of higher intensity kind of work. I'm going to hand over to Shona to dig into that in a little bit more detail. Now that you know why these, these easy runs are so important, let's talk about how much of this should be done in your plan. We work on a general principle of 80-20, of, of okay? So 80% of, of your training runs needs to be done easy and your long easy runs at 80 percent the 20 percent is a bit more higher intensity this of course is going to vary whether you are a slightly faster um, athlete or whether you as you get older we want to vary that a little bit more whether you're brand new to running same concept we we, we play with that sort of balance of 80 20 depending on you and your level so essentially as as, as you are going through your training program 80 percent of your training plan needs to be done nice and easy all of that stuff that dev was saying and why that is so important needs to be done in that easy sort of phase and the 20 percent at a higher intensity as we get a little bit older we really want to start and and and, and shifting that balance slightly to have perhaps 80 to 85 percent um a little bit more easy and then dropping that that intensity down to about 15 percent of your training runs so now we've spoken about that small percentage of your training that should be at higher intensity but what is higher intensity most of us have heard about interval work. What do we do with those intervals? How, how do we go about applying that into our training session? There are various different modalities to getting that done. So things like heel repeats, different lengths. So there could be two minute heel repeats, one minute heel repeats. There could be fartlek type of intervals. You could have track intervals where we're focusing a little bit more on speed. 
long track intervals, short track intervals. There's different ways of doing things, tempo runs, tempo intervals. There's a big array of intensity and each of those do have a specific physiological outcome. I'm going to hand over to Shona to go into a little bit more detail around when to apply what kind of intervals and what physiological benefit that has to your running. Now that you know what intervals are available to you, let's, let's talk about how to really implement these into your training plan. So first up, you really want to be thinking about where and where we put all these different intervals depending on where you are in, in your sort of race season and, and where you are in relation to where your race is. Here at Coach Perry, we like to, to start off with, with intervals that build strength. Now, I'm not talking about the strength that we're always talking about that, that, we, that helps you prevent injuries. We're talking about specifically what I say, running strength, if I can call it that. And there we like to use intervals, things like two-minute heel repeats, because that's really helping to build some really good running strength. And as you progress through your 12-week your plan, as an example, we'll start shifting those intervals to elicit from strength a little bit more towards perhaps some speed endurance and perhaps towards then at the at the very end as you're getting closer to your race um, more specific speed work this of course is going to vary whether you're doing a marathon plan or, or a 5k plan because we might change those slightly uh, to to elicit different responses from the intervals the second aspect of how to implement this into, into your training plan is, is using the term periodization, right? So don't just sort of jump in and, and, and start doing some crazy speed work. The same way we want to build our, our stamina and the same way we want to build our strength, we want to start here and just put little building blocks on top of each other. So don't suddenly jump out there and go and do 20, 100 meter rep uh, repeats. You want to really build these in a specific way through the 12 week plan, as I've just mentioned. The other aspect that, you, that we're thinking of is how do we implement this in our, in our week, right? So do you do your intervals the day before your long run or, or where does that sort of fit in on your train in your training plan? And really, I like it to have that you have a, a day off from running before you are doing a, an interval session. You want to go into that interval session feeling pretty fresh. You don't want to have really heavy, tired legs. So in the same instance, I don't like to have your strength training the day before an interval session. You want to feel somewhat fresh going into that session. Also so that we're just you know, reducing any kind of risk of injury moving forward. So now that you know we're not only driving home just do easy runs, you know that there's a balance between easy runs and higher intensity work. If you're interested in getting that balance right, check on screen now to the link to grab yourself a training program that gets all of that sorted out. And if you wanna know how smart runners train and get the balance all put in properly, check out the video on screen now.